Hey y'all, it's Trisha. Welcome back to my channel and the start of another reading vlog. Today is Monday the, oh gosh, 14th? Yeah, Monday the 14th and it is about 1.50, almost 2 o'clock. And I just wanted to give you a quick update on where I am with my reading progress, where I'm starting out um, this week. So I finished a book yesterday that I wrapped up my reading vlog with. So last night I decided to start rereading Blood and Chocolate by Annette Curtis Claus. This is a book that you may have seen me pick up in a uh, used bookstore haul um, in one of my vlogs a couple couple vlogs back and this was one of my favorite reads in high school it is about Vivian who is 16 years old she is a werewolf and her pack is kind of disintegrating because they don't have a pack leader anymore because her father had been the pack leader and he died about a year prior and she's at a new school because they had to relocate after a incident and she ends up kind of being intrigued by a human boy named Aiden and there's the conflict of liking him and, and wanting to be in a relationship with him and then the conflict of her pack where a lot of the males in the pack are becoming unruly and very uncontrollable because they are all vying for the spot of pack leader and they are then going to have a ceremony or fight or some sort of thing where they can you know determine who the pack leader is going to be and so i remember this being the only werewolf book that I had ever liked. I'm not a werewolf fan. I just never really got into it. I prefer vampires, demons, other supernatural paranormal creatures, just not werewolves. And this one I remember being so good. I didn't like the movie adaptation and I'm rereading it. And I vented to my roommate this morning and it is not good and believe me when I say there were a lot of curse words that I used in describing my frustration with this book and a lot of sneers at, during my time reading it. I'm about halfway through it. I'm about a 115 pages into it. It's, you know, only like 260 pages, so it's not very long. I am going to finish reading it, however. This is a book that I gave five stars on Goodreads, and I saw it in the bookstore and I was like, it's been so long since I've read it. Let me pick it up. I'll reread it, see if I still feel the same about it. No, I do not feel the same way about this book anymore. Um, I don't know that I want to do a rant review on it, but I, it just leaves me with the question, two questions is one, how was I so ignorant and blind to the very blatant flaws in this book? Things like toxic masculinity, extremely toxic masculinity, rapey comments made to and about the main character, and really gross pedophilic sort of encounters with um, Vivian's boyfriend's father and some of the um, other pack members, some of the male pack members that are much older than Vivian because she is only 16 when this book starts out. How was I so unable to see that at the time that I read this? And two, at what point do we stop saying it's the book was a product of its time and and forgive some of the flaws that are there and some of the choices that were made because it was a, a product of its time now here's one thing that i can forgive as it being a product of its time is the relationship between vivian and aiden is very insta lovey i can forgive that because at the time this was published back in 1997 originally and at the time there wasn't really a demand 
for YA books, for books specifically targeting people between the ages of 13 and 22. Like there, there wasn't, it didn't really exist. And so the books that were coming out for people of that age range or people interested in reading that age range, they weren't super good quality. Like, let's be realistic, they weren't. Um, so I can forgive that. I can forgive the insta-love as it being a product of its time in this book. But is it appropriate to say, let's overlook the toxic masculinity aspects of this because it, it was written in the 90s and we weren't really calling stuff like that out. Like, yes, it did exist and yes, there were people calling it out, but it wasn't, there wasn't as much of a cry for it. Um, as well as the, the uh, rape culture aspect in this. And then at what point also do we say, well, they're werewolves. So like that animalistic mentality of claiming a female, like that happens in nature. Like, is that, is that something that I have to forgive in this because these, these people are part animal or do I forgive the toxic masculinity because it is males fighting and, and you know, showing their bravado because they want to be pack leader? Like, can I forgive it because of that? It leaves me with a lot of questions. And so I'm going to continue reading it. I will let you guys know more about it. Um, and then after I finish this one, I am going to pick up Akawar like I promised because I need to finish that one because I have to get to A Court of Frost and Starlight, which by the way, I've been seeing some really mixed reviews about Akafas. I haven't been reading them, but the star ratings are really mixed. So I'm gonna finish this one today and then I'll pick up Akawar and I will see you all in my next update. Well, hello there. So. I'm not doing so great on this reading vlog. I think I've had a little mini mini reading slump. It's been a couple of days since I've updated you last. It is, it's the uh, Friday the 18th. It's just after two o'clock. And I, I went to start um, a court of wings and ruin, which I have right here. I went to start it, I'm about 35 pages in, and um, then I got sucked into the world that is NetGalley and decided to like set that stuff up. And I started reading a middle grade um, advanced reader from NetGalley called Lizzie and the Good Luck Girl by Susan Lubner. It is really cute and it's not gonna take me very long to read it but I think I hit a little mini reading slump because I finally got a job and I'm going to start tomorrow on Saturday for like orientation and like all that good stuff. And I have to do like some reading from like the employee handbook before I um, go to work tomorrow at 8 a.m. And I've had that for about a week and a half now and I don't wanna read it. So if I don't want to read that, I feel really guilty about reading books when I should be doing something that I actually have to complete for work. So I've been feeling really guilty about it, which means that I haven't been reading because I don't want to feel guilty. So I'm kind of stuck in a place. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to buckle down and do it because it's only going to take like two and a half hours two and a half hours and I've been putting it off. I'm gonna do that and then I am going to continue on with A Court of Wings and Ruin because I'm killing it with this whole like you pick it TBR thing and I have only read two books out of my TBR this month and I need to be much farther into them. I am liking A Court of Wings and Ruin so far. I just need to actually sit down and read it. So. I'm gonna go do that now and I'll see you all in my next update. So, I have been slacking in updating my reading vlog this time around. Um, today is the 26th, uh, it's Saturday. It's about 
4.45 and I didn't really update a whole lot earlier this week um, because I hit a little bit of a reading slump with what I was reading and I finally got a new job and so I started that this past weekend. So I have been doing a lot of learning and then when I get home I'm so fried because of you know not working for several months that I just needed to go to sleep. So I kind of you know skipped out on doing some reading and updating you all with where I'm at. So let me let you know where I am right now. So I did finish reading um, Akawar and I liked it. Um, I didn't like it as much as the others. I felt like it was a little too long and Sarah J Mass's writing is getting a little on my nerves with some of the things that she does um, in this particular book. It really grated on my nerves every single time she said that um, mainly Feyre, you know, gave a rude gesture or made a vulgar, it was a vulgar gesture, vulgar. She used the word vulgar every single time Feyre needed to make a response to something that she didn't know how to, how to form a retort for. And it was very much like I, made a vulgar vulgar gesture in his direction or I muttered something vulgar under my breath as I walked away and it's, it was like, it was like a lot of that. There was a whole lot of that in there. And that was really irritating to read after a while. Just like, you, you really can't come up with any kind of response and you're gonna just, okay, you're gonna throw him the middle finger, sure. And I felt like some of the stuff like, yeah, like I get how everything tied together cohesively with all of these extra things that didn't seem to be adding to the plot um, earlier in the story, but it was just so long. It was so long. I mean, it could have been shortened. I, I really feel like it could have been shortened and I feel like some of the sex scenes in here could have been like, they could have been cut out um, or like, does every, like most of the sex scenes in here were graphic, like they were, they were fully explicit. Like, you rein it in a little, and, and I feel like this is not an erotic novel, it's not a romance erotic novel, it's not adult romance, so I'm not really reading it for that, so I feel like some of those scenes, instead of like making them all explicit sex scenes like go ahead and just allude to it and just you know cut your page number down like that would have been cool so i liked it but i didn't like it as much as the first two in the series and then i picked up well it's in my you know dust jacket i picked up a court of frost and starlight i'm about i'm like 55 pages in i'm 55 pages into this one and i'm not liking it i i have to finish it this weekend uh, before the Muggle Studies um, live show for the discussion for it, but I'm not. I'm not liking it. It feels. <sighs> I told my roommate, it feels like I'm watching Beauty and the Beast: The Enchanted Christmas. It feels like a fucking Christmas special, is what it feels like. You know, where it doesn't really do anything to further the plot of the overall storyline. It, um, it doesn't, it, it gives us like extra insight into the characters, I guess, but it's not necessary. Like that's what it's feeling like so far. Like I'm just waiting for Tim Curry to pop up as a giant like pipe organ, like <laughs> just, and I don't like the switching of the um, the POV. Like I, I'm not liking that. So I'm really dragging my feet on it because I don't really want to read it because it's not enjoyable as of right now. Um, but it's not going to take me very long. I'm probably going to read. Oh, I'm going to try to squeeze out like 70 pages tonight, and then I'm going to pick up either Truth Witch or The Little Paris Bookshop. Those were the last two books on my May TBR. Those were the two that were picked in my Twitter polls. And just 
these two books in the Akatar series kind of sent me into like a slump and I, yeah, I don't really want to read anything right now. I mean like, I, I want to watch K-dramas, like that's what I'm doing, I'm watching K-dramas and J-dramas on Netflix and that's all that I really want to do right now. So I am going to finish the episode of the K-drama that I'm watching and then make myself read 70 pages of Akafas. So I will see you all in my next update. Hey, so I'm here with a final update for you all. Today is Monday? No, today is Tuesday and it is like 6.30 in the afternoon and I finished A Court of Frost and Starlight yesterday and I didn't really like it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I gave this a pretty low rating. If you follow me on Goodreads, you've probably already seen it by the time this vlog is going to go up, but it read like a Christmas special. It read like Love Actually, kind of, where it rotates through different characters um, and we are seeing what's going on with them after the events of Akawar and it's done in an interlude kind of style and I didn't really care for that. I felt like it was the Christmas special edition of a TV show where you don't really need it. It doesn't add to the plot. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really further develop the characters. It just kind of sets up for the next book in the series and I found that to be really irritating that I wasted this time and money on a book that could have been condensed from 228 pages to probably about 40, 40 pages max and it could have been included in the next book in the series instead of giving it its entire own novella. I am kind of really upset that I spent the time and the money on this. I am going to pay more attention with the Sarah J Mass books from now on about the page numbers because this was a huge disappointment, especially since I really did quite enjoy the first three books in this series. This was a huge letdown. So I finished this yesterday after I got home from work and I started in on another book, but I'll put that in my next reading vlog. So yeah, big disappointment on this one and it didn't really help my reading slump at all because I just have been having a hard time wanting to read. Um, but hopefully the book that I picked up for um, today will be better and be more enjoyable. So um, yeah, that's it for this reading vlog. Kind of uneventful, I know. Um, hopefully I will have some more to talk about in my next one. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.